YouTube battle community, Weezer fans, random people on the internet, my name is Giggins, and we are here today to talk about Weezer's most recent album at the time of making this video in 2019, The Black Album, or self-titled if you're one of those purists out there. Um, this happens to be an indie store exclusive vinyl, so it's half, half black, half clear for the actual split of the record. Looks pretty cool, and I'll show it in a bit here, but um, there's a ton of glare and reflection here, so I'm going to find... A happy medium. Well, not bad. This album came out in early March of 2019 after a long delay. We knew about this album way back when Pacific Daydream came out in 2017. Um, you know, we were ready for this to be the next album, and then that came out instead. So we knew that this was in the works. We knew this was something they were working on for years now, basically since the White Album came out um, in 2015 or 16, something like that, well, a couple years back. Um, so we've known about this for a while, and we knew there would be some darker themes on it, and we knew that they wanted to call it the Black Album, so we knew some details about what was going to happen, what was going to be on this thing, um, and a lot of people were excited about it, because hearing that, oh, Rivers wants to write something with, with a darker theme, the guys want to make an album that's got a little more guts behind it, instead of some more lighthearted stuff like what they had, they had been doing. Um, and don't get me wrong, the Weezer canon in the last five or six years has had a lot of growth. They've put out a lot of albums in these in this short span of time. Um, and it's been really fascinating to see their growth. I mean, when they returned with Everything Will Be Alright in the end, that was like the longest gap they'd had since like Pinkerton to Green album. So having an album that really was really fantastic at that time, and still is, it's a great album. Um, that was a lot of fun to see them kind of have this like re-energized energy Re-energize energy, there's, there's, a, there's a word for it. Um, to see them have that growth and to see them have that like hunger to make an album that just rocks the whole way through was fascinating. And they followed it up with the White Album, which is easily one of their best albums they've ever made. Um, it sounds like the Weezer of old, but it sounds like the Weezer of new at the same time. Really good balance there. And then Pacific Daydream happened. And that's definitely, a lot of people see that as a misstep, and I did review that at the time um, when that came out. <sighs> I haven't played it in a while because I've always, I've been a little hesitant to go back to it, but some songs do stick out to me, like Happy Hour, I remember being pretty cool, um, and Mexican Fender, I remember being pretty good. Um, so there's a couple of decent songs on there, but for a lot of people, they felt like that was just too far in a, in a different left field direction for Weezer. Um, which I can understand, if you've been following a band for a long time, and they came out with something completely different, it can be off-putting. It's like if ACDC came out with a dance album. You know, a lot of people would be, like, scratching their heads. They want riffs. Um, and that's what Weezer's known for. They built their reputation of being an alternative guitar rock band. So, when they try something different, people lose their damn minds, because all of a sudden, this isn't the Weezer I remember, this is the Weezer I grew up with, this is the Weezer from, you know, when I was in high school. I mean, people change, bands change, music changes, times change. You can't expect them to go out and write the Blue Album over and over again. They wrote that album when they were kids. They were like in their early 20s when they did that album. They're never going to repeat that ever again. They're never going to repeat Pinkerton. They're never going to repeat the Red Album. They're never going to repeat Hurley. I mean, what they make at that time is where they are at that time. They're not going to go off and do the same thing twice. That's not what being a musician is. There's no growth there. What I'm getting at is the Black Album features a lot of new sounds and directions for them and styles that they haven't played with before. And for the most part, I feel like they're pretty successful in their presentation and delivery. I feel like they have a really good time doing this. And throughout the whole album, you almost hear a weight lifted off their shoulders. Like, they're just here to have a good time. I see a lot of happiness in this album. For it being called the Black Album, there are moments where it's definitely kind of like, I wouldn't even say dark, but, you know, introspective or maybe a little bit deep. Um, but overall, there's a lot of happy sounds on this thing. Um, I'm not getting a super deep, dark vibe from this thing, which is fine. I don't really care. I mean, it's just new Weezer, so I'm happy about it. Um, yeah, so, you know, it, it's funny. The lead-up to this thing, there was the huge surprise SNL skit about Weezer, which, you know, Matt Damon and Leslie Jones are going back and forth about old Weezer versus new Weezer, and... All of us saw that as a complete shock and surprise to see that on TV. I remember watching that when it happened, being like, oh, cool, they made a Weezer joke. And then it kept going and going and going. And I was like, holy crap, this is a whole entire skit about a Weezer message board. 
which I used to be a part of, um, and to see them go into the detail they went into was absolutely fascinating. And then, of course, the humongous hit with Africa. They have had this gigantic smash with Africa um, out of nowhere. No one expected it to be as big as it was. And then they put up the Teal album, which was a covers album earlier in 2019, followed very closely with the Black album. So this one is it hasn't been one of their best charting albums. It's still a top 20 album, and the, and the Billboard 200 hit number 19. Um, it did well on the vinyl sales charts at number 3, and uh, overall alternative albums at number 2. So it's, it's done pretty well for itself on other um, charts besides the Billboard 200. But this is definitely... An interesting album. I'm not gonna say it's my favorite, but it's definitely not the worst thing they've ever done. Um, you know, there's there's definitely worse Weezer songs and, and worse Weezer albums than this. Um, and I also have to say I've been a, a diehard fan since I well I was a diehard fan since I was about 13 when Green Album came out. Um, in the last handful of years, it's definitely been that hit or miss kind of thing where like you either love them or hate them, and I've always been in the middle, where I've always just been curious to see what they're going to do next, and if some of it catches my ear, I'll like it. I'm not going to go out of my way and just say Weezer sucks now because they're not making Maladroit anymore, um, which they've got two more albums in the can as I make this video in 2019. They've got Van Weezer, which is them doing heavy riff rock stuff with blue album poppy sensibilities to it, um, and then an album inspired by Harry Nilsson and Randy Newman, um, which is very interesting. It's all piano and orchestra and stuff, so... That will be really cool to hear them do that one. The album opens up with a lead single, Can't Knock the Hustle, and the video for this has Pete Wentz from Fall Out Boy in it, which I also just found out that video was originally done for Happy Hour two years ago, but was never released, and it works pretty well with this song. Um, I have sort of a, a love-hate relationship with this song. It's catchy, it's fun, um... The thing I like most about it is that you can hear Rivers kind of smiling the whole time he sings it. It almost sounds like he's having a, a laugh with it. Like, he kind of feels like, you know, let's see what they think about this one kind of mentality. Which I kind of like, you know, and the confidence that the band has these days as a cohesive unit. I feel like they're really a tight band at this point. And they've, they've been for years, but, you know, seeing some of their live stuff online, I just watched their Coachella performance last week. Um, they were solid. You know, it's been a long time since so I've gone to see them live, and they played a really solid show. I have to admit, they were they were top notch. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Musically, this song does have a nonstop shuffle that reminds me of something that would have come out in the '90s. Um, they were influenced by '90s sort of styles with this one, Tropicalia, um, a lot of '90s Beck. So it's got that feel to it. Um, the Hasta Luego chorus is catchy and it stays in your head, but I can't tell if I like it or not. I can't tell how I feel about it. Um, it's something that grows on me every time I hear it. The first time I heard it, I didn't like it at all, but the more I've heard it, the more I'm like, ah, it's not that bad. Um, so, interesting song. Um, it's weird to hear Rivers drop a couple swears, but it's also not, because humans swear, so it just it happens. Um, next song, Zombie Bastards. This one I'm not too keen on. Um, it's definitely got that cutesy guitar kind of feel. Um, that, that slightly reggae-ish rhythm to the guitar. Um, reminds me a lot of the Lazy Song by Bruno Mars. But um, the chorus, I have a couple of questions with the lines, you know, keep on, blah, blah, blah. It's almost like they ran out of ideas to rhyme something else and wrote blah, blah, blah as a placeholder and thought that was clever and put it out. Um, in the liner notes, you know, in, in the song they mentioned listening to Queen, in the liner notes it says Weezer instead of Queen, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, I'm not sure if that was a typo or done intentionally, but I like that. The bridge in this song, I think, is pretty interesting. Some cool uh, guitar chords and changes in that one. Um, and I do like the little bit of found sound in the beginning where the, um, you know, it sounds like a movie soundtrack clip, which is pretty interesting. The song itself, I can't tell if it's something that, like, maybe he was with his kids and they were playing a video game, and it's something you say, like, in a video game, die, die, you zombie bastards. Like, it sounds like something you'd yell at your TV screen as you're trying to fire at these zombies coming at you. Um, maybe that's what it was, I can't tell, but it's not a bad song, I do like the, the breaks that it has, and there's one point where it kind of slows down and speeds back up again, that's kind of fun. Um, not my favorite thing they've ever done, but not too bad. High as a Kite. This is an excellent track, this is easily classic Weezer, easily probably the best song on the album. Um, lovely piano, 
tender vocals, honest lyrics, dreamy atmosphere. I love the dreamy feel to this thing. It sounds like, you know, nice little bells and chimes in the beginning. And the video is reminiscent of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. It's got that, that, that feel to it. Um, and Pat's drum work on this song, I think, is absolutely fantastic because it's so understated. He does a lot of hi-hat shuffle work and just kind of plays along the background, but his pattering moves the song to a whole different direction. I feel like he creates a whole different atmosphere than what the song could have been if he played a little harder. And that's why the chorus is so effective, because it really just punches you in the face. Um, when they do this song live, it has a lot more soloing going on, a lot more heavier, crunchy guitars, which I think benefits the song as well. But I do like the uh, production on this one in particular. Um, you know, the, the chorus itself is this big, explosive, sort of lost kind of expression, and I really like that. It's a little bit bombastic, it's a little bit sad, but it's a little bit optimistic at the same time. The verses are more optimistic than the chorus is, um, but it's a very interesting song, and the bridge is a bit unexpected too. Lots of like minor chords in that, lots of guitar layering again. Uh, but the piano work on this whole track is just so endearing. I love the piano work on this thing. Easily the best song on the album so far, and I think hands down the best one on the album overall. Um, Living in LA, this is a song that's also, I think, way better live. Bigger, crunchier guitars. I'm a sucker for that, what can I say? Um, but I do enjoy the production of the studio album version as well. Um, lots of yearning. It's a major earworm. This song sticks in your head forever. Um, in a good way. It's, it's really catchy. The chorus is so fun. Um, it's something that you want to sing along to and just like, kind of pump your fist to. So if they played it in concert, you'd be really into a song like this. Um, again, wrong lyrics in the jacket. The second verse, I think, has different words than what they sing. It's what's printed on the jacket itself. Um, I really like the tambourine on the bridge. I thought that was kind of fun. A little bit different for a Weezer song. But, um... Yeah, super catchy and apparently really hard to play live. I mean, like, I've seen them, well, they're, they're good at it now, but I've seen videos of Rivers rehearsing it, trying to figure out how to sing it and play it at the same time, because it's a weird weird guitar rhythm there. Um, but fantastic song. Easily, again, one of the best songs of the album. Piece of Cake. This is a really interesting song as well. Lots of really good piano work on this one. Rivers wrote a lot of these songs on the piano. Um, but the, you know, the song opens up with looking for hard drugs to solve all problems. Um, so it might be something that he was inspired to write, either thinking about, you know, the early 2000s where he wrote songs like, you know, reminiscent of songs like Do You Want to Get High, or, you know, when he wrote Dope Nose or, uh, Hash Pipe and stuff like that. Or it could be about their producer. There's an interview where he says their producer, Dave Sidek, was doing a lot of drugs, and Rivers writes a lot from other people's perspectives these days. He doesn't really write about himself anymore, which is kind of fun. And probably a lot of weight off his shoulders to be like, I'm writing about somebody else. I can just jump into this person's, you know, psyche and figure out how they get through a situation. Very much like Dave Davies would have done with the Kinks. Um, I love the phrasing throughout this song, the way he sings. She got me like a piece of cake. You know, that, the whole syncopation there is very, very fun. Um, definitely a different song for them to, to put out, and I, I really like it because of that. Um, very cool. Then we start off with side two with uh, I'm Just Being Honest, and this song for me reminds me of something off Make Believe, and I will always defend that album. I really, really like that album. Most people hate it. I really, really enjoy it. Um, lyrically, it's about a guy who is just being honest, but he's realizing that he says some things that might not be cool or might not be taken as all right to say. You know, commenting on someone's haircut or telling us, saying someone's band sounds like absolute garbage. Um, you know... The, the the chorus goes, don't get mad at me, I'm just being honest. Um, I really like the bass line on this song in particular. Scott really shines on this one for me. Um, he, Scott's a little muted on this album, whereas on Pacific Daydream, his bass was turned up really high. He has some incredible bass uh, playing on that album. If there's one thing to play Pacific Daydream for, play it for Scott Schreiner, because his bass on that album is absolutely fantastic. Um, and there's some great lines on this album too, but I feel like it's a lot more turned down. Um, vocally, I like this song a lot because I feel like Rivers stretches out a bit. Um, he kind of reaches some higher notes vocally. And, um, again, more of that dreamy echo on a lot of the guitars throughout the song as well. Cool way to start off side two. Um, too many thoughts in my head. This is actually one of my favorite songs in the album as well, too, because this sounds nothing like Weezer, but it totally works. It's got this fast-paced, high-energy rhythm that doesn't let up the entire time. 
Um, I love the wah-wah shuffle, the really dizzying layers of guitars. I love the line, getting high on cookies. I just, I, that's, some people probably cringe at a line like that, like they would have done with, you know, sucking on a lime and coconut from the last album, but I think it's funny. Um, Weezer's always had a bit of humor in their music over the years anyway, so I think it's kind of cool to have a line like that here, but I love the chorus. It's catchy, it's expansive, it's a very interesting direction for them to take because it sounds nothing like what they've done before, um, but it totally works for them. They, they, they prove themselves to do something totally out of their norm, and the verses are interesting with Rivers kind of like whispering menacingly throughout the verses, which I thought was pretty cool. Name dropping Lawrence Welk was interesting. Um, there's missing words, again, on the jacket compared to what they sing on the song itself, but, um, unlike anything that they've ever done before, in a good way. Love that song. The Prince Who Wanted Everything is the next song on here. A lot of people are kind of crapping on this song, too, and I don't really understand why. I think it's kind of cool. For me, I get a really big glam rock feel with this song. This one, like, influenced by Slade or T-Rex or New York Dolls or Bowie or somebody. I mean... I definitely get a heavy, chunky, fat guitar sound that just plods along. Um, lyrically, maybe not the most amazing thing they've ever written, but it's fun, and I do like the horn section on this thing. Hearing horns on a Weezer album is really cool. I like that a lot. They work with that really, really well. Um, yeah, not the greatest song in the world, but it's, it's lighthearted and it's kind of fun. It's, you know, just a nice little track to have there. Byzantine, um, Weezer Goes Tropical. This song is very interesting. Um, really cool chord changes here. Brian Bell has said this is one of his favorite songs on the album because of his guitar line that he plays. Um, lyrically, it goes into a couple of new places, just kind of a weird pastiche of ideas to kind of throw it together here. And lines like, you know, moonwalk naked across the room, like stuff you would have really never expected Weezer to sing about. Which, again, is interesting to hear them strike new ground. Um, the whole track, to me, sounds like a honeymoon period. When you first start a relationship, and the first few months, everything's new, and you don't know anything about that person, you're learning about them, and it's just insanely happy. That's kind of what this song embodies for me. It sounds like, something who's, sounds like someone who's just experiencing the throes of love, and it's, you know, that new feeling again, and it's, it's fantastic. Um... I also like that they referenced the band Sparks. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, you know, there's a couple of cool parts on the bridge where there's a really groovy 60s guitar hook, which I really like. It sounds almost like James Bondish in the background. Um, yeah, interesting track. I've used that word several times, but it's definitely like... I don't know how I feel about it. I, I like it, but I don't, I'm not like head over heels for it, but I kind of dig it. It's kind of cool to hear them do something different. And the album ends with California Snow, which was a song they did for the movie Spell, which has been out for a while now. So we've known about this song, and I was surprised to see it on the track list, to be honest, because we've already had this song. Um, it's not my favorite on the album. It's easily my least favorite song on the whole album. Um, it's catchy in what I feel will be a, a kind of an annoying way. Um, again... If you love this song, go ahead and love it. Please enjoy it. Please enjoy this whole album. If you love this thing, this is your favorite Weezer album, go for it. Knock yourself out. I'm just a guy with an opinion in front of a camera who I feel like putting this opinion on the internet. So what I say doesn't matter. Um, if you dig it, go ahead and love it. But this song for me isn't, isn't for me. Um, some of the rapping lines are kind of funny. And maybe that's what they were going for. Maybe they wrote it for the characters in the movie. I've never seen the movie before, but... You know, um, when, I, when I play guitar, it's sick. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's kind of cool. I get it. It's interesting. Um, you know, the chorus definitely sticks in your head. It's a very catchy earworm of a chorus. Um, and maybe if the production was different or some of the music was a little bit different throughout the verses, maybe it would have been a whole different track that would have caught my attention more. Um, but not my favorite song on the album. My overall takeaway from this thing is I wish there were more of the other guys singing on this thing. I feel like the whole album is just Rivers. Um, and the band has been so tight and, and well-oiled these days for their live shows. I just, I love the Rat album, and I love hearing the other guys sing on those songs. So, you know, even just background vocals, there isn't much in the way of background vocals on this thing. And if they are, they're really buried in the mix. Um, so I'd like to hear a little bit more of the other guys vocally on this thing. Overall, this is 
an interesting album because it shows them going into a whole new direction and I'm really curious to see what they're going to do next, which is something I've said for years with Weezer albums. Like, I'm curious to see what they're going to do next. Um, here is the inner jacket, or inner sleeve, rather. So it's got, you know, a picture of the glasses and some of the, I guess, clothes covered in that black paint. Um, thank yous, all that kind of stuff. The back has the lyrics with a lot of misprinted lyrics on here, so I'm not sure if that was intentional or they just got printed up before the final lyrics were set. Um... And then this is the actual LP. Pretty cool. This is available at indie record stores. Um, no, record stores. Um, so very cool. Half clear. Half black. Well done. Very cool. Um, I still think the White Album is the best thing they've done in recent memory. Pacific Daydream wasn't really my cup of tea. This one I feel like is much better than Pacific Daydream. Um, uh, as far as giving it a score out of 10, I'd probably give this thing like a 7 out of 10. Um, I don't feel like it's the best thing they've ever done, but I do like hearing them try different sounds. And I like the lighthearted approach a lot of these songs have, where it doesn't feel like they've got a headache the whole time they're making this thing. Or it doesn't sound like they're burdened by trying to recreate their past. Like, it sounds like they're a bit free with this expressing themselves now and seeing what they can do and if people like it then they like it. I mean bands change. If you look at the Beatles, their first song Love Me Do it sounds nothing like what they did on Abbey Road. It's in two different bands of Montreal. Their first few albums sound nothing like what they're doing now. The Who, they were a mod band. They became then then they did Who Are You 15 years later like bands don't stay the same. If you're a good band you change or if you're a really good band you know what to do. And make those changes, you know, fluid and that people will just kind of get it as you go. Um, very few bands stay the same forever. And I feel like they get stale after a while because you just, you've done that already, you know. So I like that they're experimenting. Maybe their experiments are always what my taste would like them to do. Or just not for me, which is fine. They don't have to cater to everybody. They can cater to more people, to different people who aren't Weezer fans, and bring them into the Weezer universe. That's the magic of music. So, with that said, great job, Weezer, for going out there and doing something different again, and trying something new, and seeing where you can go. Um, I'm excited for what's next. That's just the thing I always want to say with Weezer, is I'm excited to see what they're going to do next. So... I'd probably give this thing a 7, a really heavy, heavy 7, um, because it's got a lot of great songs on here, and there are some weak moments, but it's an album, there's going to be some weak moments, but overall, I think it's pretty good. Um, it's a fun album to put on, and it's definitely got some good stuff to sing along to, and a lot of earworms on here, so it's proving that these guys are pushing 50 years old, and they can still write really solid pop songs, so take that for what you will, but um, Living in LA, High as a Kite, uh, too Many Thoughts in My Head, Piece of Cake, um, those are my favorite songs on the album, and that's it, my name is Giggins, this has been Weezer, the Black Album, 2019, on Crush Music, Atlantic Records, thank you so much for watching, and let me know what you guys think about this thing, down in the comments below, so we can chat about some new Weezer. My name is Giggins, thank you so much for watching, bye bye.